In this segment, we're going to talk about the four areas of financial products. And what that means is most people will say, well, where should I invest my dollars? What should I do? And many times we challenge them to first clarify or categorize how their dollars are held, where they're invested. So let's do this. Let's draw this circle here and let's look at the four areas that you can hold your money in. The first area would be uh, an emergency, I'm going to abbreviate, an emergency cash fund. This is a fund that you literally will use for a rainy day. The phrase cash is king comes into play here because this is for the person in their retirement plan when their roof or their heater breaks, when they need to buy a new car, when they have a business opportunity or they have to lend money to a friend or relative. So this money normally is very safe money. This money is very liquid or easily accessible. They can get it out at any time. And unfortunately, this area of money has low interest rates. This typically is a checking account, savings account, Christmas club, certificate of deposit, or sometimes they might even have a U.S. government bond or an insurance company product. Now remember, you want to make sure you look at the FDIC guidelines. If it's a bank, if it's an insurance company, you want to look at the claim paying ability. But what I want you to be aware of is it's safe money, liquid money, and low interest rates. You typically want to have in here 6 to 12 months of cash. Now, the next area that we want to look at is the safe money section. The safe money section is very similar to this. It is also safe. It is limited access. And it is a moderate rate of return. And what do I mean? Well, this might be, for example, a 10-year CD. Let's say you were able to get a phenomenal interest rate on a 10-year CD, and just for illustration purposes, you were under the FDIC limits, so you didn't have to worry about if that institution went bankrupt, but you can't pull all that money out. You're going to be extremely limited. That's why you have a rainy day account or emergency fund. That's why you have a safe money account. Now, going on to the next area, we're going to look at risky money accounts. Risky money, by definition, is anything that I'm risking my money. This could be stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, gold. Read your prospectuses. We're not talking about a specific product here. We're talking about a concept. But this is where I not only uh, could not earn or I have the potential not to earn any rate of return on my money. I literally could put it in and it doesn't grow at all, doesn't pay any interest but I could also lose my principal. So this is going to be a long-term time frame. This is going to be uh, limited access because maybe I can't touch the money without a loss when the market is down, whatever I'm is invested in, whatever market that is. Um, and this is uh, potential growth but by name, by definition, you can't guarantee a risky investment will grow, okay? This is where you can make a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money. Even if you knew you could make a lot of money, this is where you know there'll be times that you will be frustrated. There, you know that there's potentially times where your money will drop in value or your investment will drop in value. Okay, the, ne the next and last part of your uh, category categories of financial uh, products would be some form of guaranteed income for life. Guaranteed income for life. There's really three categories that that fall in this area. Number one is a Social Security payout. Most Americans don't realize Social Security is a guaranteed income for life. It's basically an annuity uh, that's issued by the federal government. Number two would be some form of company pension. And then finally, number three would be what we jokingly in the, in the office will call a custom pension. 
This is where you would go to an insurance company and buy a special type of lifetime income annuity payout, similar to what they use for lottery winners. Now you have to look at the claims paying ability of the insurance company, but this would be where you could customize an income for the rest of your life in addition to any company pensions that you have and in addition to Social Security if you are eligible for, for Social Security. Hopefully this helps you today and this should be part of your overall financial plan. Thanks for watching. For more information on this and many other topics related to retirement planning, please visit our website at kempharvest.com.